All right, so Alex, do you know what a geofence uh, warrant is? Uh, with context clues, I would think it's a warrant that companies, or rather, like the government, could get to gather information about like your location through some data set. That's I'm not pretty sure. good. That's pretty good. So working on context clues alone, <laughs> Alex has got almost the exact definition. But yeah, so basically, a geofence warrant means that hey, we want all data about users who are in this specific area at this specific time. And that data could come from Android phones, that could come from applications that are on the phone that are feeding GPS coordinates back to someone. You know, there's lots of different apps that will, re that will request GPS uh, access and then continually use it, whether you know it or not. Mm -hmm. So if any of those report back to Google, then you have a scenario where it's possible that authorities can just create a general area and request any data that uh, could tie somebody to that specific place. So this was very famously used in the Capitol uh, attack where they wanted to figure out anybody who might have been within the building who wasn't supposed to be, and they went ahead and used Google accounts to figure out anyone who had a Google account that was pinging their GPS location during that time that said they were in the building. And that's how a lot of people got arrested. So um, these sorts of warrants are really, really broad. Um, they sweep up anybody who's in the area, whether they were doing anything wrong or not. Um, and of course, there are ways that there can be problems or errors with this as well. So it's, it's just worth noting that these sorts of warrants are, you would never really know that this had happened to you, that you'd been included in a geofence warrant. Um, you would you would only kind of find out like if something were to happen from it. So it doesn't it apparently doesn't really uh, take much for somebody to request one of those geofence warrants because eight thousand three hundred and sixty nine of them were requested wow. in twenty nineteen and there were eleven thousand five hundred and fifty four in twenty twenty. So like if you want to figure out who was in an area. Searching in real time is not your only option anymore. You can do, like we said, automated license plate scanners. You can also pull Google account information to figure out if anybody with an Android phone was pinging in that area at that particular time. You can go through the cell phone towers and find out if anybody was connecting to that cell tower in a regional area that wasn't usually there. It's like there's multiple different layers of intelligence that police agencies can use to try to track down someone or try to find people in a geographic area that have absolutely no warning for the people who are being surveilled. So this sort of surveillance is invisible, it's prevalent, uh, pervasive, and like it, it really doesn't allow people to opt out other than just not using these products or trying to be more aware of when your app or your phone or something else might be tracking you. So obviously these ones do require warrants. So unlike automated license plate scanners, which the databases just typically require a reason and not like a warrant, uh, there, at least there's a little bit more of a barrier. But the problem here <clears throat> is still that there's lots and lots of these warrants out there. Um, and a lot of people say that these are unconstitutional, mostly because they, they sweep up lots of people who have done absolutely nothing wrong in a surveillance dragnet and then store that information in ways that it could be used against them in the future. Um, that's something they never consented to and they never did anything wrong to deserve it. It's just a, a side effect of the way that this type of surveillance works. So yeah, people don't really like that because it means you could just be walking down the street and then be included in like a terrorist suspect database just because like your information has been has basically become part of an investigation because you were somewhere that was swept up in this uh, particular investigation. And then maybe that data was used in a different investigation. You know, you never know what's going to happen to something once it's been recorded, which is why, you know, the courts try to make it a legal process for people to do dragnet surveillance or just broad surveillance so that it's not used against everyone all the time. This is in some ways dangerously close to that because when you just select a whole geographic area, you're including lots of people who had no reason to have that surveillance done to them. And that over time becomes a bigger and bigger issue. And as we can see, it's becoming a bigger issue just because of the dramatic increase in the amount of these warrants that were actually approved. Um, and uh, just another story on that. If you wanna learn more about this, you can see from the Google service announcement exactly where, uh, rather, what the breakdown of these warrants were. And you can see that they're clearly going up. Um, you can see that they are for state jurisdictions primarily, but federal jurisdictions like some as well. You can also see which states are doing this the most. That's so great. California loves geofence warrants. It's their favorite. Whereas like Texas, Florida, Michigan, Georgia, also huge fans. Um, New York, it's kind of interesting because I think you know New York probably and California should be kind of on par, but it seems like it's just maybe more of a West Coast thing. Hmm. Um, 
So you can also download the supplemented data as a CSV if you want to do that. I do not, but you can see more of a breakdown of the types of requests that were received that they're able to legally disclose. Um, again, this is a lot of people see it as dragnet surveillance. Uh, you you can set up an entire area to be surveilled for a, like a relatively long period of time, and you can do it retroactively. So you can go back in the past and do this sort of surveillance, which is why it's sketchy. It's just. It's just very sketchy. Definitely. So even if you you know don't drive your car, avoid all cameras, and manage to evade all the other types of surveillance, your Android phone or your Google account might be the one that ends up selling you out and makes it so that there's a record of where you were or where you were going, no matter how sneaky you think you are. So that kind of thing catches a lot of people. And uh, in this case, it looks like governments and police agencies are increasingly relying on this sort of data to solve crimes. Okay, so that's actually all we have for this week. If you guys have any stories you think we should cover for next week, feel free to leave them in a comment on the YouTube show. And then also, if you have any questions, maybe from this broadcast or from any of our other streams, then you can go ahead and leave them and we will answer them on our next Q&A stream, which should be on Tuesday. So hopefully we see you all there. Make sure to subscribe and also hit the notification bell if you want to know when we go live. And we'll see you next time. Adios. Bye.